We've got the Dag Leash boys in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Um, wow. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant to have you in. Um, just as a little reminder to everyone who's watching, you know, thank you so much for joining us here live on Red Men TV. We're raising money for Zoe's place. You can use the QR code. You can go to justgiving.com forward slash page forward slash the Red Men TV. Uh, that would be great. Chris has just raised the target. Gents, we, we had £10,000 as the target. We did that while Sammy Lee was on stream. So Sammy's got a big uh, a big part to play in that one. You've just raised the target now to 20. Yeah. Uh, so we're now 65% to the way to that so yeah um let's go for 13,040 pounds raised so far we've been live since 10 to 10 this morning we'll finish about 11 o'clock at night Kenneth Kenneth Kenneth, uh, Kenneth? Oh. that's what it said when you phoned me the other day is this Sunday it's Sir Kenneth, <laughs> Sir Kenneth. <laughs> Sir Kenneth. Um, they what said, the that's what they said they said he's Sir Kenneth I'm not even circumcised <laughs> 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 and we're doing this hour yeah, for half an hour. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I <laughs> love it. Love it. Paul, cut it out. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what does always place mean to you, first? Can you? Well, we, well, we're fortunate. We've never had the need to use the, the hospice or, or Zoe's place. So it serves a great purpose for um, many people who, unfortunately, their children are suffering a little bit. And the less, the least they can suffer, the better it is for everybody. So, I mean, they do it for the the benefit of lots of people, and certainly people on Merseyside. They've always, always, uh, since I've ever come down here, they've always been very supportive of people that need support, and they know how to help it. But more importantly, they know how to say thank you as well, which is hugely important. I mean, it's fair to say, isn't it, Kenny? You've seen it many a time over the years. This city, when there's a cause to get behind, is up there the best in the world. You know, we we the city of Liverpool scousers. When we need to rise to a challenge, we just do. And another good thing, it, it takes away the rivalry, doesn't it? Yeah. They don't ask if if it's Liverpool or Everton. It's just the scousers chip in together, and everybody's going to benefit. Mm. Absolutely. Obviously, you've got the knighthood, but honorary scouts is probably the best thing you've ever been entitled <laughs> with over the years. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to put that up in the stand, do they? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be in brackets at the, at the, at the end of that. Um, yeah, Paul, great to have you in as well, my friend. Things going really you. well for you at the minute. Afterthought. But no, good to be here. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Well, somebody had to show me how to get here. And that's it, yeah. <laughs> I'm just the driver. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. you've been into Redman TV a couple of times yeah. in, the, in, in the past yourself. Um, yeah. How are you doing? Well, you've, you've just started a brand new venture as well, haven't you? Yeah, a new agency. So uh, just trying to just trying to uh, represent some, some players. We've all, only launched it a year, but we're, we're doing all right. So just got to keep going the biggest thing that's been in your calendar lately is that you play golf with Chris Pager <laughs> yeah how, how, how was he who Chris Chris yeah do you know what there's a golfer in him oh wow uh, there's well a few hidden. things in it's, it's well hidden <laughs> as you can see <laughs> somewhere <laughs> no to be fair he's not played he made it very clear he's not played that often uh, but you can tell he, you did hit some shots didn't you yeah. you were alright yeah time, I was right? alright and he gets a lot of shots so it was, it was good for the team <laughs> <laughs> he did took it? a lot of shots at the NFL yeah. uh, as well uh, did, it, did he stay awake well? No, oh, I didn't. Did what? he stay awake for well, the golf? Oh, for the golf he did, right. yeah. He had a little sleep in a bunker halfway round. Right. But... <laughs> There's a picture of me and Paul basically in our underwear in a bunker somewhere in this golf course, isn't there? But did we need context? Because that just sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> me and you in our undies in a bunker on a golf course. There was a great day, Paul. We got on so well. <laughs> All you told me about this golf day was you got into your undies and you saw Dean Saunders. That was pretty much it. We did see Dean Saunders, yeah. But basically, what they did, so there was, a, there was a competition. You had to do a selfie during a round to win a holiday to Dubai. Beach holiday. Hmm. So we we so you know, what happened was I turned around and went what we should do is one of those pictures where you sat on the beach and you just got your feet out so I'm like let's just pull our trousers up we'll take our socks off we'll sit in the bunker and we'll pretend we're sat on a beach Paul's like well we should get bollocko <laughs> <laughs> <I'm like>, what <laughs> not bollocko 
Can't my undies on. I've got yeah, some decency. On. And so the three of us decide us our merch. Yeah. There's me, there's you, and there's a pro golfer it's trying to run into the picture. We don't know. He's <laughs> <laughs> he in his underwear. He set the timer up, attached it to the golf buggy, and he's sort of running halfway into the into oh, the photograph. The three of us in our undies in a bunker and there's people waiting to take the shot behind us it was it was Dennis Irwin Dean Saunders Rob McCaffrey oh, McCaffrey, McCaffrey yeah, yeah and um, who else was it back there Alan McAnally Alan McAnally and they were used to play slow don't you in our bills <laughs> <laughs> So it's had time when you've got to get dressed before you take your next that, shot. That was it. Right, boys, as much as that is fascinating, <laughs> we have got <laughs> Kenny Dalglish. A proud legend. father. <laughs> proud, <laughs> proud father. Fully clothed. <laughs> and legends of Liverpool Football Club uh, in the studio with us. As people go, we've just waited hours for Kenny to come in and he's used to chatting about getting naked playing golf. Um, Semi naked. We can fill him up for adoption <laughs> if you want. <laughs> to raise money for Zoe's place. <laughs> How much will someone do? <laughs> <laughs> Me a lot. <laughs> Kenny, um, got to ask you about the Reds so far this season. Are you enjoying watching the new era under Arnold Slot? I think they're good. I think uh, he's been very good the way he's come in. I think, obviously, <clears throat> when uh, when Jurgen was leaving, he reminded the fans that Arnold would be coming in and asked them to give him a good cheer and a good support. and. By the way, he's earned the support himself anyway with the start to the season. Yeah. Just the one blimp. But I think the way he's going about his job is has been pretty fair to everybody. He's just come in and had a look, see what he's got. He's no dived in and try to spend all the money. You'll wait and assess what he needs and what he wants. And I think it's it's worked out well for him. It feels to me like he's not going out of his way to try and win people over in like you know in little ways you know what I mean like I think that's about it earlier Brendan Rodgers was very keen to try and win the fans over Jürgen's just such a big character that he wants everyone to kind of love him it feels like Arna's just come in and gone I'm going to win people over by winning football matches and it just seems to be a really sort of sensible approach to taking over such a big big shoes I think the most important thing he did was he went in to be himself Jürgen a one of he was fantastic Right, everybody loved him, everybody supported him and he liked the limelight and I think and he's a wee bit step off that. Mm -hmm. But he still wants to win football matches. And the way he does it won't be the same way as Jurgen did it. So the best way he's got and the best chance he's got of being successful is to be himself. And he's been that. And I think the support he gets for the for the terraces. How how did that affect you, well. Kenny, the, the support that you get from the terraces? You know, what, what does it give you on a week-by-week -week basis every time you play at home? What does the support from Anfield do to you and your players? No, it's more important for the players than it is for the manager, obviously. If the players if the players are getting the support, then it filters through to yourself and sitting in the box there. But everybody's in it together. It's not an individual sport, is it? I mean, I don't want to be a uh, favourite with the fans and the players or nothing. Yeah. Everybody's in it together, and if if everybody sticks to it to, together, you've got a better chance of being successful. It feels like you know people. A lot of people have said about like the the Shankly to Paisley thing. You know, it, it's an obvious sort of connection to me, but it's. I mean, I'm not saying I, I think Slot's probably a slightly better talker than, than than Bob was by the by the looks of things. But he, um, but what I, what I think you've got with him is this again. It's just this level of car. He looks like he's set the bar really high. He doesn't look like he's coming and, got, and like he's overawed of being Liverpool manager. Like he has like he's got big shoes to fill. It looks like he's coming. He's told the players now we're Liverpool lads. This is the bar. The bar is you've got to be challenging for the title. Yeah, but the other thing is it not a great job to get? <laughs> I mean. He, he didn't need to come in and build a squad up. So great you did there it twice. There was a squad that, no. <laughs> But th there's a... There was a squad already there. He just had to top and tail it. Pick in a couple of them, maybe say, well, I don't go along with that said philosophy of playing that position or this position or whatever. Go in and pick it, whatever suits him. And ask the players, give the players the first option to see, well, if they're good enough to do it, they're in. If they're no, I'll need to spend their money. So, but I think uh, I think he's been a real credit to himself and everybody else. And the best way he's got to be successful is to be himself. 
Uh, Paul, one of the, the last times I tried to get you in the studio was during the period a couple of seasons ago where Liverpool weren't great. <laughs> and uh, you were like, you politely refused the chance to talk about how Liverpool were performing at the time for fear of, uh, of yeah, having to turn up to Anfield and speak to important, be around important people. It's loads better now. Yeah. Are you enjoying the honest lot reign so far? It's brilliant. I think you, you summed it up. I think the, at the age, I think Jürgen made it easy for easier for somebody else to come in with what he did on the final day of the yeah. season, as you mentioned. But also the way he's come in and not tried to change anything too quickly, which I think would have been a mistake because the team was doing yeah. was doing well. So he just come in and he just seems to be. It was hard at first. I think the first home game of the season where you're used to winning the game. And then you, you in your brain you're thinking, well, Arnie's going to run up and start punching yeah. the cop, and they, he just walked in, <laughs> and you're like, oh, uh, now it, it becomes real. And even like looking down and, and seeing a different person in the, the technical area, it was weird. Yeah. But as as my dad said and, and you said earlier, the best way is winning football matches. And I, I was actually thinking when you were speaking before you said it, it is a bit like the Shankly Paisley thing, where you've got this iconic figure. But then Paisley came in and got better results, mm. you know. And, and and people talk about Shankly. You know, the people that played for Paisley talk about Paisley. But I think Arnie's come in, and it, is it the best start ever from any Liverpool manager? So that's that's pretty impressive. You know, you can't you can't do any better than that. So, you know, another game tonight, um, and it's just been. I think it's just it's a little bit different. It's not as wild. Um, I know we changed a bit more control in the last few years under Jurgen, but it's a lot more control now. Where you probably create. We create probably a few less chances, but we concede a lot less chances as well. Yeah. You can see but, that in the status sheet, can't you? Sorry. But you've got to go right the way back to Shanks. Shanks is the one that anybody who's got any affiliation with Liverpool Football Club should really, really appreciate because he's the one that turned the whole thing around. Yeah. But where, as he was turning it around, old Bob was in there with him as well. Yeah. Joe Fagan, who became manager after Bob, was in there. Ronnie Moran. Roy Evans, Ruben Bennett, old Tom Saunders. They were unbelievable, unbelievable football people, honestly. And they moved in. Bob didn't want the manager's job, right? Joe didn't want the manager's job. Did Kenny want it? No, Kenny was in, a, Kenny was in the first year of a four-year contract. <laughs> <laughs> and Kenny thought he was playing quite well. <laughs> and he must have thought it was rubbish because he said, would you like to be manager? So, as I say, the whole thing goes back to Shank. The foundations the were laid. Thing. And the, I remember coming to Liverpool when I was 15. Uh, we played a couple of games and it was it was just so welcoming a wee boy at 15 I mean I'm, somebody said hello to me I went bright red <laughs> so I'm in there and you were on the bus for Anfield down in Melwood and it was all the first team players were in there Shanks was in there there's banter in the bus and the whole lot and I know we were in the visitors dressing room getting changed obviously and they had the first team dressing room but once you got on the bus Everybody just mixed together. And I thought, this must be brilliant coming from someplace like this. I mean, Celtic was like that as well. But I never knew that at the time, because I hadn't been there. But, and it kind of be an accident. That the, the places where the club is happiest, the players are happiest, the dressing room strong, is the ones that's a success. Is that something that you then felt that you had to carry on, or was it there and you, it kind of carried on? Regardless. It was there. Yeah. I mean, I get thrown out, didn't I? When I, when I was offered the, the manager's job when I took it, I, I get thrown out the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> I would walk up and we'll go in the door and it'd be buzzing. And as soon as I walk in, whoop, zipped it. Quietness. And I went, OK, I'll be back in five minutes. <laughs> 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 I just was that hard it. to take personally? It was hard for me to take it, I. But what, what was even harder was having to make decisions with the boys that we'd played with that wouldn't be in their favour but the football club's more important than any one of us did so, it help when you can go I'm still the best player at this football club so I, I never thought that at any time okay. no I never come on surely what? Is he? I mean I get, he, a, a very self-deprecating man is he always like this in terms of his own and talent what yeah he, he never he, do you know what I would say and this is he, he doesn't ever like promote himself or 
feel the need. But if somebody else gets the adulation yeah. and he doesn't, then that would irritate you a little bit. But you don't need the adulation. You don't want the adulation. You're very self-deprecating. But you don't like it when someone else gets it if they don't deserve it. No, either. if I'm getting the abuse. No. <laughs> <laughs> How does, I have, look, I've got the Perry's here, so we have to ask ab yeah. about it. You know, we, we funny we had Stephen Gerrard on earlier and we were yeah. talking about his, his son's coming up now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's obviously a... a that's that's a thing. So I have to ask during your football career because I think dads spend a lot of effort and a lot of time watching sons' football careers. Was that what was it like watching Paul grow up? You know, coming through at Liverpool. He's still waiting. <laughs> <laughs> See me grow up. <laughs> was it? Was the? Did you feel that you know, like you had to guide him more, or was the pressure all? Did you ever feel that moment to feel like, oh Christ, here, here we go, my dad's coming to tell me how to do something or whatever? No, the, um, he was having an idea himself because if he's in the around the house, he sees how you behave in the house, so he has a wee bit of an idea. And all I know about bringing up uh, your son is what my dad did for me. So he encouraged me. And that's what I was trying to do for Paul. Yeah. Right? Encourage him. And you, you go along and you might get excited about scoring a goal. But how did your dad feel? Well, I got to get, I got that feeling. Yeah. Through Paul. We scored his first goal for Scotland under 23s or 21s. And I'm back on the phone with a tear in my eye telling his mum that he's just scored for Scotland. And then he scores the Premier League goal up at uh, St James's Park so it gives me a wee idea what, what it was like and by the way I wouldn't my dad he never had a football career but he was a decent player seemingly um, so he couldn't really relate to what happened when I turned professional yeah. and he admitted that to Jock Steen he said you he said hey, we might put him out they used to farm players out to Junior clubs, which is semi-professional, or guys that had been professionals before and you no know, turned out too successful for them. And he used to send the young players out to toughen them up a wee bit. I mean, Glasgow youth leagues were tough enough without going to play and that, but five or sixes went out. And at the end of it, um, but Jokes team called them up and said, uh, I think maybe we can we'll put him back out for another year. He said, Well he doesn't think that. He says, Oh He said, Look, he said, they might not get many games. My dad said, Well that's up to him. Yeah. He said if he wants to be a footballer, he needs to be a footballer. So it was either that and or, or an apprentice joiner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was no use by the way. I was no use with the saws either in the hammer. <laughs> is there a so yeah, I mean is is there a moment though where he goes like, I give some advice, and you're like, he goes like, all what you need to do is be born with a natural level of talent and be one of the greatest footballers ever to pull on a Liverpool shirt. Is that a useful advice? But, for but you that was, that was a level of expectation for me, wasn't it? Really? But uh, no, he was more. I think probably like most dads, they you know, and, and you're talking much more when you were younger. Uh, he, to be fair to him, it was hard for him to come to games, but he did, you know, because at the time he's such a big figure in Liverpool everyone knew who he was but he'd, he'd always find a way to, to watch a game uh, whether it was playing on Saturday morning if he could come before before he went to Anfield or going away with the ball on a Sunday he'd be at all of them um, rain or shine so it was it, it was although he was who he was and it was difficult for him he came to almost every game I remember I always remember him being present anyway yeah I mean Kenny, you, your kids have all seem to have done pretty well for themselves. Is there a point now where Kelly might be the most popular and most famous Daglish at the... Oh, I know, technically not Daglish now, but, you know, you must be... It got, that's, that sense of pride. You see him, Paul, Paul's done brilliantly for himself. Again, Kelly's an absolute star on, on, on Sky Sport and stuff. You must be able to... You've had a great glittering career in life yourself. Must be pretty, feeling pretty pretty good, mate. Yeah, and the other two girls... Uh... I've done a, a fantastic job of as course. well. Lauren's doing the charity and that Marina set up and uh, her other daughter's setting up one or two things in the charity and she's does a great deal of work doing the Cheltenham. So, listen, that's the way they're brought up. You, you, you're not going to... 
Are you taking credit for all this? No, Marina. Marina. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I can't take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even our real dad. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I keep telling him, adoption works. <laughs> <laughs> you, four are, you four are great examples that adoption works. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable <laughs> sensational um, I saw you mention this story a while ago Paul that obviously your, your son's getting into the, the footy more and more mm-hmm. but he maybe didn't have a quite a level of an appreciation for, for what your dad was, level he was at until he saw it as like icon cards on, yeah, on FIFA yeah 100% so, but I do think that's it, I, I, I lived it really I think that you know the the game's AFC now isn't it the, yeah. the game's called and I think that so my son lived growing up in America obviously my, my dad with his age they didn't really have that much of a grasp living in America growing up kind of what level that his granddad was thought he was a bit of a knobhead to be like I said that yeah yeah I thought Steve would have been sleeping by now but then he got the icon card and he got the icon card and in FIFA and he went to school and I said your granddad and they've gone oh my granddad's cool now it was like it was, it was, it's mad how you can achieve what you achieve but modern day it has so much influence um, on the younger generation and I think even when you look at players in the game now because I've started I bond with my thron- son through the game yeah. you know like looking at players and like trying to do SBCs and all that together and he was like you, you look at some players like a Barese who was one of the best defenders that's ever walked the planet he's no good in FIFA <laughs> yeah. so the younger generation are like oh he can't have been a good player so I think it's important not only is, is he in FIFA his card's really good as well so it, uh, that helps yeah does but, but, your yeah. son kick a football like a Dalglish or does he kick a football no. like a normal American no offence to any Americans <laughs> <laughs> do you know the ones who just can't like get their feet right and they're like oh my goodness me yeah he, do you know what he, to be fair he, he's transitioned into MMA now he loves the oh, MMA really? does he yeah so he's doing that four or five times uh, four or five times a week and he's, he's, he's bigger than you yet well, <laughs> well he's, you getting watch out he's got bigger one. feet He's got no. He's got massive feet and massive hands. My my wife's dad's very very tall. He's got big big construction worker, big hands and big feet. My son's taken after him really. So I think he's going to be a big boy. Nice, very good. The um, Kenny got to ask. Obviously, you've got you mentioned it before. You've got the stand. I mean, how? Again, we know we know you're quite a humble sort of fella. When someone did he come to you and say, "Do you want it?" or did he come to you and tell you that it was happening? And what was your sort of reaction to that? Uh, John Henry told me they were going to name the stand after myself. And? and I thought, I said, please yourself. <laughs> 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 but the, obviously, it's, it's a wee bit embarrassing at times, but it is a great, it was a great thing they did. And they had absolutely no reason. This, I mean, they're absolutely spoiled for choice. Mm-hmm. And many players that people that have represented Liverpool Football Club in any capacity could they put up there and say they were notorious? They could put everybody up, couldn't they? Yeah, but, they could do. But, but I agree that they made the right choice. To be honest with you, well, that's debatable as well. But when when they put it up, and then um, we got the the knighthood for. The, the king now. Um then they had to move it they had to they, <laughs> they, they <laughs> yeah. had to move the, number, the letters along so it was equidistant yeah. and yeah. That, by the way I thought that was funny I thought that was <laughs> that will sort them out Someone no but it's a great you just humble don't you you're just humble that I still call it a Kemlin Road yeah well, and I still remember the Kemlin Road for what it was when we played Dogs Abuse <laughs> I think it's the front it's, two rows used to give you dogs abuse. Stay it's still so tight at the front in there. It's it was, oh, no it was construction terrible. by the way. I can't put seats in. Yeah, I don't know I but remember, there. my name's in the outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was on the on the night I think. Did you get uh, Alex Ferguson obviously has had, you know, been in that sort of company. Was there did, was there any back and forth between the two years? Over the knighthood, to ask him for advice. No, no, you go like, yeah, I made him 
made you know boxed it now did he ever give you any stick for not no Fergie Fergie would send over a letter or something that says congratulations brilliant and the same the same throughout my footballing career well managerial career um, I only played against him once I was playing centre back for Celtic Reserves a big centre back oh yeah yeah, yeah I, I was being taught a lesson because I misplaced a couple of passes in midfield <laughs> <laughs> and I was back and Fergie had and uh, I think about 18 months or something before, he got huge transfer in Scotland at the time. I think it was St Johnson. Anyway, he went to Rangers and they played in the cup final. Uh, in the first minute, corner for Celtic, cross comes in, Billy McNeil, who was the centre-back for, for Celtic and captain, nodded it in. Fergie's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> people blame Tim. I don't know if he was the blame. I don't think he'd be blame. Maybe wouldn't be far away from him if he was. Anyway, so the next year, he's in the he's the bombed him. He's in the reserves. And in September, it was always the first team game. If was at uh, Celtic Park, and the reserves would play at Ibrox. So this time it was all the way about. The first team were at Ibrox, and we were at Celtic Park, and I played against them. How did that go? I suffocated him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you went on the pitch with a pillow. By the way, I, he was a, I kept going, I kept going, Fergie. Fergie, I was looking in my pocket, Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> and we beat him. We beat him 4 1 eight. And you never let I him forget it? I thought it was 2 0. I knew he definitely never scored. Yeah. But neither did I. <laughs> that was a big solid centre back. Oh, yeah, definitely. Towering. Tower at the back. <laughs> Never went ahead in my life. <laughs> um, let's take it back to the to the stand. Then obviously we know we've got Chankley's got the statue, Bob's got the statue. Now you've got a stand. Who do you think would be would be or should be next in line for someone to be to be honoured from the sort of Liverpool panting if it was up to you? I think there's many, many of them that are deserving of recognition but I think um, for myself anyway for me the recognition was in the medals that we've all won and yeah. we've come across so it's not as if they're trying to identify people and isolate people and say oh they're special but you're not really special everybody's the same and in the dressing room is why I think they had a lot of success because in the dressing room there was nobody big time everybody was an equal yeah and the great camaraderie and banter and everything in the dressing rooms as you probably find out for the lads when, when they come up mm -hmm. to say a few words and the, the camaraderie and the respect for each other and appreciation for each other tells you that there's no, there's no anybody in there looking for accolades you've I'm got your accolades as Ronnie, as Ronnie Moran used to say there's your league championship medal take one if you think you deserve it I thought we deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, I know you guys have got to go. Thank you so much for taking the time to come in. But just, just lastly on that, it's the Liverpool and managers go hand in hand, don't they? It feels like, you know, certain football clubs, Manchester United celebrate the players with something about the manager role at Liverpool that is sort of elevated above. Uh, deify them, don't we? More. We deify them, yeah, our yeah, managers. Yeah. We always have them. Uh, and it's that, you know, again, this, you know, Slot's got these sort of boots, he's following in that long line, isn't he, Paul, where I, they're just, they, they become great. I'd say it goes the other way as well. If they're not what we expect, then we blame them more than probably what they deserve to be blamed for. I, mm. think, we, I think we place more importance on a manager, as Liverpool fans in general, than what is probably deserved in terms of good and bad. Um, but I'd, I do think that... Um, it's just the way it's just the way things are at Liverpool. I think it started with Shankly. You know, when you see what a manager did to turn the club around, um, I think that's probably where it started, where we had this love affair with the manager. And 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 I think that that's kind of stayed true. That's passed on from generation to generation. And that's probably where it started, I would say. But I think there's similarities, although I wasn't here, between the personality Shanks was and the personality Jürgen was. The personality Bob was yeah. when he came in for Shanks and the personality Arnie is yeah. coming in after it. Because Bob was a withdrawn person. 
But by the way, great, great decision maker. How he got it right, so many right, I never know. But he won six titles in nine years. And just throw in a few European Cups if you want it. <laughs> just on the way. Wind it up a wee bit, aye. You... And the greatest thing that, that I think happened to Bob, or I thought happened to Bob, was when Graham said it, Wembley in the League Cup. I've told, the, I've told the boss to go up first. And he went up these steps to get it. And that, by the way, that was the least that he deserved. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? And I've got a question. I'm going to be answering questions, but I've got a question for you. Do you think um, that because of kind of the Bob's kind of nature of not kind of self-promoting himself and that that went through to the players and it's that almost self-deprecating humour and almost like deflecting attention and not trying to take credit, that, that what Liverpool achieved during that time is maybe undervalued in in... In, in terms of what any English team have ever achieved. Because I, I think that if you go back now, when they talk about that period of time, Liverpool and Bob Paisley, it's never been... You, you can talk about... Man City haven't done it with the untold riches now, won three European Cups, and that was back when you had to win the league. A lot of teams that have won the European Cup since, uh, obviously, Bob Paisley won his and Liverpool won four in, in, in that short period of time, wouldn't have even qualified for the European Cup or the Champions League back then? Because you had to win the league to qualify. Would you say that it's 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 under it's maybe underappreciated how good that Liverpool team was? But who's who's underappreciating it? I, I Certainly know the people well, that, that played there, know the people that supported it, and that's a more, they're the well, most important one. I'd you say well, in terms, I'd say well terms, terms because agree. there wasn't, during that period, there wasn't, I and mean, you can say what you want about individual accolades, but there wasn't one Liverpool player that won Ballon d'Or or anything like that. It was it was almost like I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't. I don't think that that Liverpool team is held in as high regard or as appreciated worldwide as what maybe uh, relevant to how good they were and what they achieved. Well, maybe that was an advantage for us. Yeah. Because at the time, maybe they never they never thought they were that good. No, I'm not saying they never thought they were that no, good. No, no, I'm not, it's I'm not, not, it's not talking like, about the opposition. So if they underestimated you. Makes your job a little bit easier, doesn't it? Yeah, well, when people talk about it, and you see this now on pundits on television yeah. and stuff, they talk about the treble winning side of, of Manchester United, yeah. don't they? This is a side Aye. that did it for much longer period yeah. and had a much bigger sustained success on the European front than that side, but it's never held up alongside no, I, Ferguson's side, is it? That's what you're saying. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that, you know, if you look what that achieved, if you look how many league titles and three, I mean, four European Cups, 77. 78, 81, 84, and then beating the final in 85, when you had to win the league or win the Champions League to get in it. No group stages in those. No cha- group stages. You, if you lose, you're out. Yeah. It was knockout. I mean, that is the ultimate test, really, for me. And I, I genuinely think that when we talk about like teams, what they achieved, I think that team should be spoken about as one of the best to ever of any time but it's almost at times you sometimes think football only started with the Premier League yeah I think but to, be, to be fair okay you've probably not had to buy a pint in any major city in the, in the world because of the success that you had with Liverpool during that no. period so <laughs> you know, as far as underappreciated you probably feel pretty appreciated for it but yeah it's the pre-Premier League thing sometimes for, for younger people maybe don't recognise it but also I didn't have to buy anybody one either <laughs> <laughs> which is more important <laughs> no I think I think the most important thing is the people that matter I would matter to Bob first and foremost are the people with Liverpool in their, in their blood right and as long as they appreciated him and he, he wouldn't even we wouldn't even be upset if he never but as long as they appreciated what he did and I'll tell you all the players appreciate what he did then he's content he would be content it doesn't matter you don't need to wheel people in and wheel the stats in I mean every time you watch a football in the telly now it's about stats. So what? With stats, you can have as much of the ball as you want. But by the way, it's goals that count. And old boy, he was. I never had the pleasure with Shanks, although I met him when I signed. Big toys took us down to Shanks' house. He lived just near the Everton's training ground. And he said, oh, he said, just two words of advice. He says, then he overeat. I went, okay. He says, and then he lose your accent. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's more than two. <laughs> that's more than two well, words. <laughs> <laughs> so by the way, yeah, they did not it. count either. Dream <laughs> manager couldn't count. <laughs> One out of two is no bad, is it? <laughs> kept, so I've kept away on. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely sensational wow. stuff. Oh, that random one then the accent thing. I remember interviewing Luis Suarez just after he'd signed, and I said to him, "Who's harder to understand in the Liverpool in the Liverpool campus? Is it Jamie Carragher <laughs> or, uh, or or Kenny Dalglish?" And he said, uh, "Carragher, I understand a few bits. Kenny." Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> As I've got, he speaks Spanish to him now. He did all right. It worked out all right for him in oh, the end. Quite. And I can't he speak Spanish. <laughs> Guys, wow. The Dag Leashes in the house. Thank you so much, uh, Kenny and Paul, for taking the time to come and join the stream today. Um, Chris, do you want to give us a little update on where we're at? Yes. So currently we're at £14,297. It is now 71% of the target, having changed the moved the goalpost. It was 10,000. We're aiming for 20,000. We've got around about seven or eight hours left of this stream. Plenty more guests to come. Uh, I just wanted to say first off, Sir Kenny, thank you so much for coming in, um, showing everyone what type of a man you are, as you have done for years and years. But an extra special thank you to Paul as well. Driving who, him? It was, no, 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 I'm feeding him. That was his food. Yeah, he's got to get him a, a dinner on the way home to this. But no, Paul, I, Paul's been such a big help. Um, linked us up with Lee Pryor uh, uh, earlier on today. I mean, just absolutely unbelievable. We couldn't have put today together without you, Paul. I just want to say thanks for that as well, no mate, and, and giving your time up as well and, and speaking to your dad and everything, mate. But you've been a... Yeah, yeah, really couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, so this fourteen thousand pounds is as much to do with you as it is to anybody else, mate. 